You know, we get up and go to work. We have to take care of our immediate families, our immediate needs, our when we get off work, we want to spend time with our families normally, or we got other hobbies to do, we either have second jobs, we are busy people. And we rely on elected officials to, primarily elected officials around the world, um, to handle these kind of problems. And for the most part, they are all inept. In the United States, for instance, whether or not you are a Republican or Democrat, it really doesn't matter. Both parties are totally inept. So therefore, it is quite literally up to us individually to do that. And how do we do that? Do we... Uh, we have to do more than pray. We have to do more than just meditate on these problems we have to take action if we are made as many believe in god's image the divine creator the infinite as we like to call it here at our church the alpha and omega the beginning and the end is something we can't wrap our minds around is that i, I like to refer to God as the infinite. Well, the infinite gave us the ability to reason, the ability to think, the ability to have compassion, the ability to love. And, and although we may do those things in certain aspects of our lives, we have, um, we have a lot of issues that are complex that we don't discuss nor try to find reasonable solutions to in school. We don't, uh, well, let me take, uh, let me suggest, I don't know of any public school or private that would go to the lengths of trying to figure out some of the social ills. Well, economic inequality the abuse of money being spent uh, the incarceration problem drug addiction of all types the lack of being able to use uh, psychedelics for example that have been proven over and over again help very helpful in depression very helpful with uh, people facing uh, imminent death. Uh, preventing ourselves from exploring our own consciousness. Uh, there's so many, so many problems that fail to ever be ad addressed properly. And that's because politicians have vested interest from people of very specific interest groups all lining their pockets. If you just look at Congress, for instance, all of a sudden you have these people that go in with uh, moderate levels of success or income and they leave multimillionaires. Uh, or they get jobs when they leave Congress as lobbyists and just make a fortune. It's a sad state of affairs, not only in the United States, but around the world. And, and nobody discusses it. And I, well, I say nobody. Most people do not discuss it. So where do you start? Where do you begin? How do you connect the ideas of, of all the outside philosophies and subject matter in a day, in a week, in a year, in a lifetime? There, there's not there is not the leisure time that one can devote to not only these problems, but just to learn all of the different things and filter them for yourself. Uh, there's so many things, uh, even here recently, uh, our church has been studying so many issues. Uh, I'll just go through some of them with you that we find fascinating. And 
it takes a while to be able to put these dots together and see what makes sense and what doesn't. Just outside of religion and how these ideas tie into who and what we are and what we believe. Like Zechariah Sitchin and his, uh, the Sumerian text that he interpreted and wrote many books about, about the uh, Anunnaki and the, uh, the civilizations that uh, possibly lived here in ancient times from other places and other planets. How can these ancient texts um, at least not be explored instead of just thinking they are an absolute metaphor? Uh, it is quite striking, and there's evidence uh, of that being the case all around the world. Uh, you can look at Stonehenge and the uh, other places similar to it, from France to South Africa, all over Africa. Uh, the Michael Tellinger, uh, some people believe that uh, those big, huge, round circles in Africa are borders or some little uh, villages, homesteads, what, whatever, but uh, they certainly suggest they are something much more than that and all those things are discounted and you have Eastern philosophy that we can learn so much about so much about looking on the inside of ourselves instead of just the outside Eastern philosophy uh, that's well described by figures like Alan Watts uh, Yogi Landa uh, San Guru you know and, and a lot of these people have uh, their own personal issues, or did have their own personal issues, but their philosophy is great. Like uh, Jordan Maxwell, for example, has uh, many great points on a whole myriad of subjects uh, relating to some of these things. And some of uh, his thoughts are uh, kind of like with uh, a lot of religions. You just think, okay, that that's a little little off but we can take bits and pieces of all these things and see what makes sense how do we make ourselves better first how do we make our families better second how do we make our communities better third and then spread it out from there but it all begins and starts within ourself so that, that means we need to learn how to meditate better we need to learn how to pray better and not just for oh please lord give me a new car uh oh lord i don't know how i'm gonna get this or that or or do these sorts of things uh, i don't think god really cares if we have a new car or a better house or if our kid goes to college or not uh, i think in our current state of affairs god must be quite disappointed in man as a collective and and we can fix that we don't have to be uh, like our presidential debates last night have to speak and yell over each other and just automatically try to debunk the, uh, each other which is all over the internet everywhere and you know, we can have open and honest discussion without being rude uh, just with anybody from uh, you can raise questions uh, about reincarnation. Uh, studies with Ian Stevenson. Uh, he's been remarkable at finding thousands of cases that are credible, that are unexplainable. About how children can recollect with vast details before the age of the internet their previous lives with, with birthmarks on them where they described that they had died before and it was able to be verified that they died from some some wound. Uh, or the person they're describing uh, died from some wound exactly where their birthmark is. That, it goes on and on and on and on. Well, you, we can debate that without having to yell over each other. We can debate how to... Uh, figure out the best ways to promote productivity and economic development without punishing achievers. Uh, we can figure out how to raise people up without absolutely and outright just giving people things. Uh, 
we are a God gave us the ability to think and reason and be polite we should use that we should not because somebody has an idea that is not like ours whether you are a Baptist uh, talking to a Catholic and y'all's religious beliefs uh, about certain certain dogma in Christian philosophy just clash there's um, there, there's no reason why we can't find common ground and figure the best way to move forward and uh, our Catholic and Baptist so you know either way uh, our, our Jews and the Palestinians or the or China and India. I mean, the, the list of, of people that have conflicting views are everywhere. Just look at your neighbor. You know, the scripture says we should love that neighbor as, as we do ourselves. And I'm afraid that a lot of people do not love themselves because they don't know themselves. If you do not know yourself and why and who you are, how can you love anyone else? How can you truly love your spouse? How can you love your neighbor? How can you love anything? If you only know yourself on a superficial level, why do you believe the things you do? Has your mom and daddy told you to? Would you be a Muslim if you were born in the Middle East? Probably. Would you be anything other than a Christian if you're born in the United States? Though the likelihood of that is it's pretty small. Uh, you're indoctrinated at, at an early age to your social constructs. We have to examine that. Why is it that we do these things? We just take it on face value that, you know, mom and dad told me that's true, so I need to believe it. That, that's a that's unfortunately a not using what the infinite gave us and that is the ability to think and question and reason so a lot of these a lot of people ask us what do we believe you know we, we are attempting to put together the dots and all of these things just not only from the various sacred text and scriptures from around the world but also these other ideas from uh, just Sitchin's Graham Hancock and what we don't know about uh, the United States uh, or North and South America for example all the the, the vast archaeology that is being done with the uh, pyramids all around the world including here that we don't even talk about the Gobekli Tepe, yeah, proving that what we have been taught about the history of man is totally incorrect. There is a civilization here approximately 11,000 years ago that was advanced and it's been discovered. What does that mean? What implications does that have? Those things need to be explored so we can figure out how to move forward. Maybe these, maybe there's a way to live better than we are living now. Maybe we can please ourselves and be proud of ourselves collectively and individually, most importantly individually, so we can be better neighbors, better friends better spouses, better fathers and mothers. And we cannot do that unless we know who we are. As Graham Hancock says, we are a species with amnesia. We need to figure out who we are. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you come back and see us.